Forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. If you were really risk averse, you want to make sure that there's no power of appointment during lifetime. You want to get rid of this, uh, this permission to stay, to stay in the house and rather get yourself a life estate. You want to get rid of this allowed substitution clause. And you probably want your trust to specifically prohibit the trustee from buying annuities and, and thereby converting what looks like a trust asset into an income stream. Now, you're hearing all of this and, and one of the problems, of course, with these, or one of the problems traditionally with these is you transfer all your assets to an irrevocable trust. And one of the other things about the trust is it typically has to be unamendable, right? So, and then you hear that the rules have changed and you say, oh my God, what am I going to do? I, I, I have this defective document, but I'm prohibited from changing it because of the very terms of the document. Well, that's where some of the good news has occurred. There are actually two devices that have ar arisen recently. This is classic lawyers, right? That, that give you the ability to amend an unamendable document. Who would have thunk it, right? One is called decanting. Um, this, this, unusual term, uh, came out of a case that actually uh, got um, decided last year by the Supreme Judicial Court, a case involving, um, I am told, the Kraft family, a person who has done very well, as well as his football team. He and his team have done well. And so he had developed, for tax purposes, um, a set of, and transferred assets into a set of trusts for the benefit, or one or a set of trusts for the benefit of his children. And they were irrevocable and unamendable. And then some tax law changed. And so he needed to amend it. <laughs> so he went to his very high priced lawyers and said, what to do, right? And the lawyer said, well, you know, the trustee under the trust has the power to transfer any of the trust assets, right? So what if, and by the way, this lawyer didn't totally make this up. This has been allowable in other states. This is the first time it was ever allowed here. What if we had the trustee take all of the assets and, and, and we're going to create a brand new trust over here that has all the correct provisions and the trustee is going to use his discretion to transfer the assets to kind of pour them through this little filter, hence decanting, right? And, and then get them into this nice clean trust over here, which doesn't have any of those old dregs of the bad trust over here. Um, and so that's what he did. Um, but he also said to the lawyers, well, we want, or the lawyers told him, he said, but you know, we think this is going to work, but you probably, because of the amount of money involved here, you probably want to make sure. So they went to the court, to the probate court, uh, and asked for an opinion as to whether or not this was allowed under the trust law. And, and, and then, and the, the answer was yes, but then they appealed it. They had somebody appeal to the Supreme Judicial Court because they wanted the absolute top lawyer, the top judges, to be saying this is okay. And last year they, they said yes, that that was actually allowed. So under certain circumstances, and I won't go into the details about there are some caveats in this, you can decant. You can simply create a brand new trust that's got all the clean stuff and pour the, new, the old assets into it, right? The second one, though, which is easier and was actually created by, by statute, um, in Massachusetts fairly recently, all trust law, or a lot of trust law, um, changed because Massachusetts, um, which had a, a set of statutes on trusts that had evolved over 300 years, decided to replace that by adopting something called the Uniform Trust Code, a set of, or a version of that, a set of trust rules that was developed really nationally by lawyers who were trying to just improve or update trust law. And among other things, what one of the updates was a provision through which the trustee, with the assent of all beneficiaries, through a non-judicial settlement agreement, that's what it's called, a non-judicial settlement agreement, can change an otherwise unchangeable trust without having to get court approval. That's why they're called non-judicial settlement agreements, because before you could actually change those trusts, but you had to get court approval in order to do it, right? So there is a vehicle 
through which you can do this. And the, and the reason why, if you're a very conservative person, you may want to consider doing that uh, is because, first of all, your old trusts are not grandfathered. Um, I know there are a number of mass health rules, like the look back periods, which, in, in which there have been changes to the look back periods over time. Remember the look, well, yeah, you, you folks are as old as me. So you may remember, originally, back when Medicaid was created, there was no look back period. You could literally transfer all your assets out to somebody else and qualify for mass health the next day. Well, they didn't keep that a rule for very long because they could see where that was going. So after a few years, they did a one year look back period. And then in I think the 19, early 90s, a three year look back period. And then it got extended to five. And that's where it is now, it's at five, right? But in each one of those cases, they always grandfathered the old transfers. They said any transfer made prior to the date of the new law is gonna be in the case when they went from three to five, any transfer made even three years before the law was adopted was okay. Everything got grandfathered, all old transfers were, were grandfathered, right? The same is not the case regarding reinterpretations of trust law by the courts. If, if, the, if the courts if the, it decide that they are going to reinterpret these trust provisions, that's not gonna, you're not gonna be grandfathered by virtue of the fact that you have an old one, right? So if you're, if you worry about stuff, you may want to get it checked. Um, and and if, you, if you do, keep these things in mind. If, if your current trust is okay, right, and you clean it up, you simply add some provisions to it or change some provisions through a non-judicial settlement agreement or decanting, right, to clean it up to deal with these kinds of, you know, more recent developments. And if two years from now, you need nursing home care, you need to apply for mass health. And you bring in your old trust together with the new provisions, right? It, the, the, all you have to do is tell the caseworker, look, here is the old trust. Now this old trust is more than five years old. And as long as we all agree that those provisions are okay, I'm safe, right? If you've got a problem with that, that's the only time that we have to deal with this five year look back period regarding any of the new provisions, right? So by changing your old trust now, if you're already grandfathered, you're not losing any of the benefit of the grandfathering. So if, it's, if, it's okay, if the trust is okay and you were just being overly conservative, you haven't hurt yourself. If on the other hand, there is something about your current trust that you find discomforting and that you think might get reversed now, by doing these changes now, you can at least start the clock running again at least regarding those changes. So that if the trust is invalid because of those changes, you can at least know that five years from now, you're gonna be safe notwithstanding any of that. It's not great consolation, but it's like the best I can give you. So, so the bad news is that there may be some changes that are occurring. And I've, as I told you, those changes have occurred at the administrative level at this point. They're at the superior court. Once there's a decision, we'll let you know right? If it keeps going up on appeal, we'll let you know, right? This is one of those, everybody wants real kind of real comfort on these and you can't get that in this kind of process. But, that, but to the extent that you're concerned about it, um, the, the, the good news is that you have a way of taking care of it. You may want to talk to your lawyer and if your lawyer says you've got some issues, talk to them about just getting it taken care of. Uh, one other kind of piece of good news. Well, first let me tell you something that I bet you didn't know. And then I'm going to tell you that the thing that you didn't know about, uh, which was really terrible, is getting better, right? So the thing you didn't know um, was that if you, if you, you apply for mass health and, and, and the caseworker looks at the case and says, oh, geez, there were these transfers within the last five years. And so I'm going to say that you're ineligible for some period of time as a result of those transfers. Um, you get that notice from Mass Health, and it's going to say you've been denied, and this is why you've been denied, and you have 30 days to appeal, right? What they don't tell you in that notice is that even if you don't think you have a right to appeal, right? Say, say you gave two years ago, you gave fifty thousand dollars to your bright grandchild to, so that he could make it through, you know, skimping through BU, which is actually more than that now for. Tuition room and board, you know, any place, any place. It used to be that was the Ivy League, you know, now that's like everywhere. So you gave them the money three years ago, and now you need um, um, a nursing home assistance. You've applied for Mass Health, but that gift was made during the look back period, right? 
So what MassHealth would do in that case is they would determine or may determine that you are ineligible for a period of time. And the way they calculate that period of time is they take the amount of your gift and they divide it by a number equal to what they think is the current cost of nursing home care. That right now, take my word, is $279. So if you gave away, if you had given that grandson $27,900 three years ago, and the caseworker said, oh, that was an invalid gift. The caseworker would say that you in the nursing home now with no money, because remember you had less than $2,000 before you applied, um, are ineligible for a period of 100 days. And that's 27,000, oh, that's 279 divided, or the others, $27,900 divided by 279. Now during that 100 days, the nursing home isn't get, getting paid and they're getting upset, right? And so they're wanting to throw you out, right? And they're probably gonna start proceedings to throw you out. They may also sue your grandson um, um, for fraudulent conveyance, but at least they're gonna try to throw you out. So in that situation where, because of course your grandson can't give you back the money, right? Because it went on to, to in intuition and they just, and he's probably still in school, you know, um, or trying to pay it back. Um, so there is another provision in the law that says in those situations where you can't get the money back and you can demonstrate that it would cause you serious personal problems um, to, um, if, if you got knocked off of mass health, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to file for a hardship waiver, right? What, now that your notice from mass health doesn't tell you that. It also doesn't tell you that that notice that the hardship waiver has to be applied for in 15 days. 15 days from the day that you got your notice. You've got 30 days to appeal the case. And they've told you that, but they didn't tell you that you only had 15 days in which to apply for your hardship waiver. And what's more, if you apply for your hardship waiver, there are now no regulations telling you under what conditions they might grant the hardship waiver. And that's why there are only, I wanna say over the last five years, I think there are like three hardship waivers that have been approved, right? because very few get applied for because people don't even know it exists. So what is changing is that bill, H.R. 3705, uh, filed by Representative Kate Hogan in Stowe, has made it, has gone, been in, has made it out of committee, and is, there's some li real likelihood it's gonna pass this year. If it does, it will change the rules so that you will have 90 days from the day you get denied to file for your hardship waiver. The notice that you get from MassHealth that gives you your denial will be required to tell you that and they'll be required to develop written regulations regarding all of that. So, in general, that's the legislation. There are some other things that's coming up, but and, and it has not passed yet, May this year. Um, there are some other things that are still in committee, and so I'm not even gonna talk about those. Um, if you wanna see this presentation again, if you just thought it was so interesting, you know, that you're just dying to see it, um, as you see on my handouts, I have a YouTube channel we upload to, to Frank and Mary's YouTube channel, or you can just Google Elder Law Frank and Mary, that's their YouTube channel, to see this or any of the presentations that I do. And the goal of everything I do is always to help you sleep well at night. So if none of this concerns you at all, that's okay, that's good, right? Uh, if it is of concern to you, you just wanna be aware of it and you probably should talk to your lawyer about, in this case, looking at your old trusts again. Thank you very much.